Today I'm going to review Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Lies we may any one of us encounter it. This dick can forewarn us. I call it my House of Horrors. Dr. Terror's House of Horrors came out in 1965 and it's the first of seven anthology films produced by Amicus. The other six are Torture Garden from 1967, The House of Drip Blood from 1970, Tales from the Crypt from 1972, Asylum also in 1972, The Vault of Horror from 1973, and the final one was From Beyond the Grave in 1974. However, there's two unofficial anthology films, Tales at Witness Madness from 1973, that gets mistaken for an Amicus production, and also The Monster Club from 1981. Dr. Terrace House of Horrors was directed by Freddie Francis and was written by Milton Subotsky. Once again, Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee team up in this film. It runs 98 minutes and cost £105,000 to make. In this film, the Lincoln stories are set on a train. There are five of them. The titles are Werewolf, Creep and Vine, Voodoo, Disembodied Hand, Vampire. The writer Milton Sabosky wanted the film to be like Dead of Night from 1945 as he considered this film to be the greatest horror film ever made. As with all these anthology films, it has a great cast. The film stars Peter Cushion, Christopher Lee, Donald Sutherland, Roy Castle, Michael Goff, Kenny Lynch, Bernard Lee and Neil McCullum. So this is the first Amicus anthology film that they did. And in this one, there's a strange man played by Peter Cushion. And he tells these five men on this train the fortune. But there's always an awful twist ending. An answer to the deepest questions of philosophy and history. And sometimes a means of prediction. Like uh, fortune telling. Of a car. Hey, Phil. If he wanted to read my bloody fortune on that train, I'd stick his bloody tarot cards up his bloody ass. <laughs> So what I'll do with this review, with it being an anthology, I'll give marks for each story and then an overall mark for the, the film. So I think the Lincoln story is probably one of the best with Peter Cushing and everyone in the train. He tells them the fortune and the first one's called Werewolf. But this is a great story to start with. It's very atmospheric and I think the ending's really good. He hasn't got silver bullets in his gun, they've been taken out. And you see the woman as the werewolf at the end. It's a great last shot. So I think the, the first story is like a good strong one. So I'll give the first one about an 8 out of 10. These The second story is the worst. Crepe and Vine. Bernard Lazy and If a species ever develops it isn't, it could be the end of the world. Open the door. Phil, that's him out of the Bond films. Why didn't he get fucking James Bond to save the deer? <laughs> Do you? In the films? It's all about this plant that's killing people. Like Pooley Dawn, you see the, the wire where the, the, the branch is moving. So it's really poor, so I give that one about a 3 out of 10. It picks up again with the third story called Voodoo. Roy Castle's in. And there's some good music in actually. Give me something more than just a promise or two. Show me real affection and I'll give my love to you. He's in a band and they go to the West Indies. He, he's trying to pinch a song that this uh, voodoo ceremony is doing. He, he writes the notes down and takes it back to England. But the forces come after him. And at the end, he, I think he dies of a heart attack, I think. Just sort of like collapses. But it's quite funny. I think I'd give that one about an 8 out of 10 as well. The fourth story, Creighton Hand, that's the best. It's, it's a proper classic. It's got Christopher Lee and Michael Goff in. And Christopher Lee plays probably the most pompous, big-headed character put on screen. He's an art critic. 
Hey, that bloody Christopher Lee plays a bloody good pompous stuck up twat. No bloody method actor needed there. <laughs> and Zoe is slagging off Michael Goff's paintings. But he plays a trick on him. He says, uh, we've got a young artist who's done this painting. Could you review it for us? Christopher Lee says, it's brilliant and all that. He says, can I say the artist? And he brings in a bloody monkey who did the painting. <laughs> so Christopher Lee's character's a laughing stock. Would that be possible? He's here now, as a matter of fact. Indeed. <laughs> However, he runs Michael Goff over and he's at, his hand gets cut off and it's crawling around outside. And it's a brilliant prop. It moves around. It looks like a proper hand. And it was also used again in, and now the screaming starts. The same prop. So it's a really scary story and I think I'd give that one 10 out of 10. Definitely the best story of the five. The last story is called Vampire. It features a very young Donald Sutherland and his wife's a vampire. So he stakes her. Turns out there's another vampire. It's sort of like a pretty good story. It's good that they did a vampire story in, in this film. I'll give that one maybe a 7 out of 10. This town isn't big enough for two doctors. Or two vampires. But I think the Lincoln story that uh, connects all the stories together I give that 10 out of 10. I think that's probably the best Lincoln story of all these Amicus films. Dr. Shrek. Hey, Phil, that face was me. Hey, Bones, you always say you're in every bloody film and there's a skeleton that pegs. Ah, fuck you, Phil. And this film's sort of like you could almost imagine it being a comic. It's got that same feeling, like a bit illogical, some of the stories. And they've all got gruesome twist endings, so it's sort of like an EC comic. In fact, Amicus did a couple um, based on EC comics. That was Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. But I think they all have that same feel to them. And Milton Sabosky, his favourite film's Dead and Night, and you can see influences of that film in this. Uh, the first time you see Peter Cushion's character, he says, is there room for one more inside? And that's a line from Dead and Night. And Freddie Francis directed this. He's done loads of great horror films. He does three of the seven anthology films for Amicus. He's good at using close-ups and atmospheric shots. Another interesting fact about these films is... Peter Cushion stars in six of the seven that they did. So that just proves how much of a workaholic he was at the time. He seemed to be in every horror film. But I think the star of the show for me was Christopher Lee. <laughs> He's so pompous in this film. And even on the, the Lincoln story where it's set on the train, his character's annoying and pompous. And he doesn't believe in Peter Cushion's character that he can tell fortunes he has in the tarot cards. He's really funny. It's one of his uh, best characters. So I've rated all the individual stories out of 10. So overall, the film, I think it's more than the sum of its parts. With all the stories connected together, I think I'd give this film, I think I'd give it 9. 9 out of 10. It's almost perfect. It's the Pink and Vine story lets it down a bit. So although it's a good film, I think my favourite two Amicus films are still Tales from the Crypt and From Beyond the Grave. I can never decide which one of them I like best. So when I review another Amicus anthology film, I'll probably start with Torture Garden from 1967. That's the second one. I might as well do them in order. What did you think about it, Bones? Did you like it? I thought it was bloody brilliant. Better than these bloody films they make these days. Lad of bloody shite. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye.
plant like that could take over the world. Well, Sophie's there, will you? 